Greetings and welcome to this module on web application development. Super excited about this module. Um, I've probably never said this before, but I think this might be the most important module, most significant module, most long-lasting module that, that you'll encounter in this class. The reason I say that is because web application development is, is so important to modern software development and also because the play framework I think is a really interesting modern framework for for development so you're going to learn a lot about state-of-the-art software development and software engineering practices by uh, working on this module okay so web application development I know that it's lost a little bit of its pizzazz because of the rise of mobile application development like iOS development Android development but on the other hand, um, I still think that it's a very, very important application area. Every software engineer should know how to build web apps. If you go to hackathons or if you go to startup weekends, one of the most prized um, you know, uh, members of any team in a startup weekend is someone who can whip together a basic three-tier web app in a very short amount of time and make it look decent and deploy it and that's what this module is going to give you the chops to uh, be able to do so you're going to be a really sought after person at any given startup weekend um, after you finish this module the other thing that's great about this from a software engineering perspective is that there's so many cool things that you learn about through the process of web application development there's the model view controller architecture um, which you'll very shortly start to, start to see. There's also the three-tier architecture, which is the presentation, business logic, back-end database. That's also um, part of what we'll be looking at. And then third, there's responsive user interface design. And what that is, in brief, is the idea that you build a uh, web application which, in which the presentation part of the user interface adapts to the uh, the, the mode or the, the, the client-side application or hardware environment. Um, so if you're looking at your web application on a mobile phone, it has a different look and feel than if you're looking at it on a tablet or if you're looking at it on a laptop or maybe if you're looking at it on a very large screen display. And that's part of the innovation of HTML5 and is something that is making many developers prefer to go back to building regular web applications versus a custom iOS application or a custom Android application in addition to the web the web application you can basically build one one application and it will look good in all these different environments um, so if you're worried about you know mobile application development have no fears you can use a responsive user interface design and kind of cover all the bases. We're also going to be looking at cloud-based deployment, continuous integration, and maybe, just maybe, we'll, we'll get to talk a little bit about scalability uh, in this module. So the play framework, um, I've used a lot of different uh, frameworks in this class, and this is my first time um, teaching the play framework, so this is going to be a little bit of a learning experience, not only for you guys, but for me as well. But I'm super excited about the play framework. Um, in my initial experiences, I, I think it offers some really compelling um, uh, differences to other environments that I've used in the past. Um, it's profoundly influenced by Ruby on Rails, which you know is kind of the um, the seminal modern web application, you know, fast development, fast deployment kind of environment. So they tried to utilize as many features or adapt as many features as they could from Ruby on Rails to uh, when developing Play, keeping it in Java, and and not only keeping it in Java but using a, a JVM language called Scala, which is a um, a modern functional language. Uh, that um, compiles down to bytecodes. So it'll run on any environment that has a JVM installed, which includes, you know, all Java-based environments and most browsers and, and so forth. What's cool about it, what's really cool about it, is that Scala enables some scalability issues, which we'll run into a lot later, but, but just from the very get-go, the cool thing is that by using Scala, you can have templates or view files that actually compile 
and and therefore you can ensure that you are um, uh, you've constructed the template file in a way that makes sense and, and will not produce certain kinds of errors at runtime. And that's something that you can't get in Ruby on Rails or Django or some of these other uh, modern web development environments that, that don't have the strong type safety that Java provides. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, and, and if you've used Django or Ruby on Rails, I'll be interested to see how you feel about the play framework as you start to use it and whether you, you, you think that these, you know, this, this type safety issue is something that, that is of, of uh, benefit. The other thing that the play framework guys did, which I think is pretty interesting, is that they just completely abandoned the traditional API used for web application development in Java, which is called servlets. The servlets have been around for a long, long time, almost since the genesis of uh, Java. And um, by, by building your, um, your web application framework on top of serverless, you're buying into a certain approach to you know, the way things work. And um, by abandoning servlets, you open up certain new kinds of capabilities. Um, and so you'll start to see that as you work through it. You, you, you maybe won't really recognize it unless you have prior experience with a servlet-based framework. Um, but I think you know, there's some pretty cool things that, that they're doing here. Um, uh, the play framework is pretty new, so there's not a lot of um, experience with it in the commercial community. However, LinkedIn is now using the play framework, so there's definitely one, um, you know, high-profile um, um, corporation or you know, web web-based service company that's that's using the play framework. And interestingly, one of the things they really like about it is that in a very high volume website like LinkedIn, they find that the use of Play Framework, and in particular the use of Scala, is enabling them to write highly scalable um, services with code that's much more readable and simple to understand than, than um, the callbacks and other kinds of mechanisms that are, that are generally used. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so coming from you know the robocode the stuff we've been doing there are some issues that you're going to encounter first we're going to we're going to step back from using maven um it turns out that that uh, you know I, I i looked at at using maven to build play and it turns out to be just kind of more problems than than what it provides so we're going to be using the 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 kind of native play development environment to do building rather than Maven. Maven is still going to, I think, your experience with Maven, I think, will still be really useful to you because outside of the play framework, you know, most other environments are using Maven or using Ant. Um, and so I think you'll run into it in a lot of other contexts. And so having exposure to it will, will be useful to you. But in the specific case of play, I don't think that it's of big benefit. So we're not going to use it in this particular case. They use another build tool, which I th think I might have mentioned in the build tool section called SBT, Scala build tool. And um, hopefully we'll get around to playing around a little bit with SBT as we, as we move on. The other thing that's interesting is that uh, Play doesn't come with kind of built-in support for our automated quality assurance tools like CheckStyle, PMD, FindBugs, Jococo, et cetera. So um, there are ways to integrate it, and I'm going to get to those a little later. Initially, however, I'm not going to focus on those because you've got enough to worry about um, just kind of groking the, the Play framework itself. The other thing that's interesting is that there are some places where you'll say to yourself, this is just wrong, okay? For example, when you're building model classes, the recommended approach is to make your fields or your instance variables public, okay? And that's just something that if you've you know, been a long time Java developer, you never wanna have your fields be public, you want them to keep them private. It turns out that in play, um, for in the case of model classes, there are some reasons why they want them to be public. It has to do with the way that you use its, the, the annotation framework for um, creating the underlying relational database schemas. So, there's, um, so in the case of play, we're going to go along with this idea of using public fields for model classes, even though Java style, uh, you know, EJS says that, that this is not appropriate in general. The other thing is that you'll notice in controller classes they use static methods 
And the reason for that is because the designers of Play decided it was crazy building all these instances um, for all your controller classes. Let's just make these methods static and pass right through to the underlying you know, database manipulations or whatever other code you have. Um, and this is a stylistic choice. Other frameworks that I've worked with you know, don't do this. They actually recommend that you make instances for your controller classes. But you know, we're going to go along with what the play designers have, have chosen. Um, and, and in a sense, this also you know, reflects the number one rule of the elements of Java style, which is adhere to the style of the original. So we're going to do uh, you know, what the play, folks, the play folks recommend in these particular cases. Finally, uh, just to briefly kind of give you a preview for how we're going to be learning about the Play Framework, we're going to start the, our first module, which is this one right here, is, an, is a simple introduction to the framework. You're going to go through a tutorial, just kind of typing in the code as you find it in the tutorial. And that's going to get you up to speed with um, you know, the various aspects of, of Play web applications and um, the style of development. Then we're going to start drilling down model development, view development, and controller development so that you can understand a little bit more about the, the internals. We'll look at um, how to test. And then we'll get into deployment issues involving both um, you know, cloud-based deployment. We'll either use Heroku or CloudBees. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to pick right now. And then we'll also look at continuous integration. That will almost definitely be CloudBees. Um, and finally, we'll circle back, when we get to continuous integration, we'll circle back to quality assurance, and I'll show you how you can get back all the goodness of check style, PMD, and, and so forth for, um, for play. So I hope you have fun with this. Um, I'm certainly having fun learning about play, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.